And joining us now, Josh Linville, Director of Fertilizer at Stone X. Josh, great to have you back on Market Talk. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing all right. I'm a little uh, worn slick from vacation, but darn it, we're back home. I got to sleep in my own bed last night. That's a, that's a victory in my book. I would agree with you. I'd say that is a victory. Well, glad you had a good vacation and you're back at it. And I know things are busy right now in the world of fertilizer as uh, we started to see some prices come down a little bit here in recent weeks. So walk us through some of the latest. What are you seeing with fertilizer prices right now? I know our farmers and uh, growers very interested in what's going on. Yeah, I can't imagine why going through a period of uh, all time record highs and all of a sudden we finally get to talk about prices going down. And we, you know, we've been sitting here looking forward to the day where we can actually share good news. But urea is the one that really stands out from everything else. Uh, again, we, we talk in terms of NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana barges. But the highest price we got to was nine hundred and thirty five dollars just as we went into the start of what we thought was going to be spring. And if you think back during that time, we were expecting an on time spring. We were expecting corn acres. I think by that point, I don't think we had rolled them back yet to 89 and a half million. I think we were still talking 91, 93 million. Now, all of a sudden, uh, here we sit, we're June 7th, and a barge of urea is 470 to $475 for a June shipment barge. And you start looking at it. You know, some of these analysts are talking about corn acres possibly being down as far as like 86, 87, 88 million acres. We've lost a tremendous amount of demand. So, Urea prices have been cut in half. UAN prices are probably starting to come off a little bit. Uh, they're feeling the heat. And Hydra's has not yet, but that's because we haven't seen the, the summer fills and the fall prepays yet. Those are still to come, but there's a lot of pressure there. We're seeing phosphate values come off a little bit, not nearly to the extent that we did in Urea, but then again, that's more of a tightly controlled market when you look at the fact that you know China is still out of the marketplace. And then potash hasn't really come off at all. But Hey, we'll take our wins where we can. We'll we'll take nitrogen going down. Very true. Very true. Now, if I'm a producer looking at some of these prices coming down right now, Josh, what am I looking at for possibly locking some things in for fall? Is it too late for that? Really? Have some growers really already done that or uh, possibly looking out to next year? Is it is it a chance to maybe lock in some lower prices or is it more of a wait and see if we come down even further? I'm still in the boat of wait and see. And I, I'll tell you what, man, I am scared to death to say that because the last thing I wanted to do is sit there and say, listen, I'm looking at 470. I think it's going to come off further. And then all of a sudden it's $800 again, right? But when I look at it, the reason I sit there and say that is because A, from springtime, we're what, 10, 11 months away? Look at how the world has changed in just a matter of, you know, four to eight weeks, 11 months, almost a full year away. And when you start looking at 470, we haven't been here very many times in history. There's only, you know, three or four cycles, I think, where it's actually hit at or above 470. So I'm sitting here saying a year in advance to buy some of the highest price material we've ever seen. And now that I'm off on vacation, I'm actually going to do some work and see how long have we actually spent above this price point. I just can't get in. I can't. I don't love it from a corn perspective, because, again, when I look at the ratio, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. We're still a little bit higher than the last few years. We guys are a little bit different. Uh, when you start looking at those, you know, urea to wheat ratios, those are actually fairly solid. That's something where I think I would probably take a look. Now, Josh, I know as well, we're watching things like heating oil, you know, gas prices, diesel, looking at natural gas as well, propane, because we've seen a lot of late planted corn, probably going to be a lot of drying have to take yeah. place this fall. What are your thoughts with what's going on in some of those markets here as we work into the month of June? Yeah, it's uh, natural gas is the one I obviously watch fairly closely, given its input into uh, nitrogen production. And it's a high price, trust me. And so you sit there and you see the price of inputs going up and you see the price of the raw material or the uh, finished material going down. You think, oh, OK, we're getting towards uh, cost of production. We're not close to that. We're still very, very far away from it. You know, our, our brothers over there in Europe, they're still dealing with a much worse situation than we are. The exactly your point, that's something I thought of over vacation. The last time we had a late planting like this, harvest was late. Everybody had to dry. It was a slow process. And you remember what happened. We didn't have much of a fall run, which means in turn, we had a huge spring run. We had to get a tremendous amount of stuff done. And the thing that's starting to kind of worry me on the flip side is the fact that we have that situation that's going to push some demand from the fall to the spring or could push some demand from fall to spring. And then you start coupling that 
with uh, the situation where we're talking to some people now and they're talking, listen, the corn acres aren't there this year. We are going to have to plant a massive crop next year. That's that much more demand. I, I, I hate to always talk and, you know, oh my God, worst case scenarios and things like that, but that's what we always watch for. And that's something that worries me. I know as well, you know, supply chain issues have been a big story and just, you know, looking at obviously the war in Ukraine and, and things like that and impacting supplies. Are, are you seeing any alleviation of supply chain challenges when it comes to various fertilizers? What are some things we're still watching there? Yeah, from a global perspective, listen, this vessel freight is still extremely high priced. Um, so that's still something we're watching. It's still much more expensive to move from point A to point B. But the world is moving into its summer lull. There's not a whole lot of demand coming up. So we're not really going to be challenging that a whole lot going forward. The biggest thing we've been seeing from an international perspective is originally we thought Russian exports were going to be near zero because of this war, because of the world economy sitting there saying, no, we won't do business with you. The world drew a very clear, distinct line. And over time, that line has faded. It's gotten fuzzy. And now you start seeing Russian product going to places like India and Brazil and different places like that. Well, I know uh, Putin, again, while I was on vacation, made the comment like, oh, the world's going to starve if you do these sanctions against us or whatever the situation is. That only works if you completely shut down your exports. If he starts shipping or continues to ship to India, Brazil, the world S&D builds. Supplies are there. The world isn't as bad off as what it was. A lot of things to consider. Josh, before we run out of time, any other final thoughts, anything else you want to share with what's going on in the world of fertilizer right now? Keep your head on a swivel, guys. Um, that's the biggest one. You know, I always come on here and talk about don't let emotion drive you or any of that kind of stuff. And it still holds true. This thing, don't. there's still going to be plenty of volatility. Uh, this thing is far from done. There's still a lot of heavy hitting factors on both the bull and the bear sides. We need to stay calm watch for our moments and when something when a situation pops up and we can lock in a profit for our organization there's nothing wrong with that well with that director of fertilizer at stonex josh linville always appreciate the time and insight sir thanks for joining us today and we'll talk to you again soon all right always a pleasure thanks for having me